Good morning, everyone. Welcome to today's session, New Testament Survey, BC 103. Today, we are going to study on the letter to Philemon. Yes, even before we could begin, uh, good morning, Sid. Yeah, even before we could begin, can I request one of us to lead us in prayer? Can I request Sid? Can you lead us in prayer, please? Thank you. <clears throat> Father, we come to the throne of grace. Lord, thank you for this day you have given us, Lord. Lord, as we are going to learn from your word, Lord, all the letters, Lord, which were written by your apostles, Lord, which are great teaching till today, Lord, as we will be learning from that letters, Lord. Lord, let that letter should minister us, Lord, and it should create a great impact so that with the future ministry we are going to do for you, Lord, it should be impactful and helpful for others lord lord the thing we are learning should not be wasted but it should be used in your kingdom expansion all glory be given to you O lord we thank you for the teacher we thank you for the rest of my classmates lord in jesus name we pray amen 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 thank you sid thank you so what do we know about the letter to philemon anything it can be anything that you know you would like to share it with us one chapter. <laughs> One chapter. Okay. Anyone else? Yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. Uh, Philemon uh, is a letter that was written by, by Apostle Paul when he was in Rome in his house arrest, written for Philemon to, to forgive his runaway slave called Onesimus. I think the name was Onesimus means useful. Those are some of the yeah. things. So he meant that he's sending him much as he was useless to him in the past, but he's now sending to him very useful and now not only useful, but he's also going to be a brother. He's a brother, he's a Christian. Yeah, thank you, Pastor. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Lubega. You just summarized the whole letter in a uh, in few words. Thank you so much. Very helpful. Okay. The book uh, of Philemon is a personal letter written by a friend to a friend. And it is one of the shortest letter. As John said, it has only one chapter and it consists of 334 Greek words. 334. So the very purpose of this letter is to bring the reconciliation between the two individuals. As Lubega shared, between master and a slave. So it is a valuable book in that we discover much about the heart of Apostle Paul. We see a man who is to take the example of Jesus who was willing to lay down his life for another and here he shares he was willing to put his life on the line of for a slave with no position power or resource as we read through the letter we see the frame the words that apostle paul uses uh, uh, you know recommending for reconciliation recommending for forgiveness from philemon to Onesimus. Paul puts himself in place of a slave and he requests for forgiveness. That's a very uh, beautiful letter when we read it. So what was the very purpose of this letter? When we read through the letter, we see two purposes. One, file, uh, uh, you know, to commend Philemon for his compassion to other believers. Second, we see to commend Onesimus to Philemon and ask for his complete forgiveness and restoration. As we discussed on the purpose, we also see the unique features of this letter. That is, Philemon is the only total private letter in the scripture. So it gives a, a valuable glimpse into the social life of the apostolic times. And the theme that runs through the letter is 
Paul's intercession for a runaway slave. Can I request one of us to read some of the key verses from this letter? Verse 16, 17 and 18. Jeffina, is your mic working? Jeffina, is your mic working? Yes, Pastor. Uh, yes. Jeffina? So if, you're, yes, uh, if you're my... Uh, okay, great. Can you please read uh, verse 16, 17 and 18 for us? Uh, can I know the chapter? Uh, yes. In the book of Philemon. There's only one chapter. So verse 16, 17, and Book of Philemon, verse 16, 17, and 18. He's no longer like a slave to you. He's more than a slave, for he's a beloved brother, especially to me. Now he will mean much more to you both as a man and as a brother in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him, welcome him as you would welcome me. If he has changed wrong you, if he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge it to me. Thank you. Thank you, Jeffrey. Yes. A wonderful letter recommending, charge it to me. If he hopes you anything, charge it to me. Um, very well, Paul uh, writes this letter to Philemon so that, you know, Philemon will be in a place to, you know, uh, reconcile, forgive Onesimus, reconcile with him and accept him. So uh, let's see the backstory uh, that we can um, put the pieces together uh, and get the details within the letter. So for more than two years, during the third missionary journey, Paul ministered in Asia Minor among the people of Ephesus. So this was a successful period for apostle among the Gentiles, to minister among the Gentiles. And where he saw many people of Ephesus uh, where... Uh, received the gospel and they converted their lives were transformed so uh, uh, so among them among these visitors was philemon so uh, paul uh, paul's teaching minister to philemon who was a wealthy roman citizen and a slave owner from the nearby city of Colossae. we see that in the book of philemon in the letter to philemon chapter 1 verse 19. Okay, so Philemon was ministered by Apostle Paul and Philemon was also known for his faith in Jesus Christ, for his love towards others and uh, he owned a slave named Onesimus who had um, at some point when he was uh, working as a slave with Philemon, at some point, he runs away from Colossae to Rome in hope that he could disappear into the populous urban environment by taking off, uh, taking some of master's goods, okay, and just to be lost in that big urban city. But then what happened? Instead, he was found. So Onesimus may have run into Epaphras, the founder of the church at Colossae, and one who could have known him, and he would have introduced him to Apostle Paul. So what happened? Let's look at the background of Onesimus. So Onesimus was a slave and he, who ran away from his master, at some point, uh, uh, came under the influence of the ministry of Paul and through the work of the Holy Spirit, his life was transformed and from an unprofitable servant, it is transformed to be of, uh, 
a faithful and a beloved brother in Christ. See, that is how Paul is addressing Onesimus as. Onesimus also served Paul in some way for a shorter season while Paul was in the prison at Rome. So Onesimus eventually uh, you know, authenticated his conversation with work suitable for repentance. And at Paul's encouragement, he went back to his master to make things right with him. See, the first assignment that uh, Paul gives Onesimus, though Onesimus is needed for Paul at the present to be with him and to be of helper, but what was more important for Paul is the reconcil uh, the reconciliation between um, reconciliation between Philemon and Onesimus, between the master and slave. Though Onesimus owes his master, we see Paul writing a letter recommending Philemon to forgive him on behalf of Paul. Paul is putting himself in place. So Paul writes this letter on behalf of Onesimus to help him fulfill his moral obligation to, to return and to be restored. So Paul wrote this letter to his friend Philemon to be gracious to his slave Onesimus, who was once upon a time slave, not now, and to forgive him for the very act that he did that was against him, against the Roman law. Um, so under the Roman law, there could have been a severe punishment for a slave who, who, who robbed uh, the master's goods and ran away. It could also cost him death. And here we see Philemon was most likely uh, being a church leader in one of the home church. So he was still reporting to Paul. He was in good relationship with Paul. So that's the reason Paul writes a letter to his own church leader recommending him to forgive Onesimus. And Onesimus most likely carried the letter in the company of Tychicus who carried the Colossian letter as well. So Paul appeals to Philemon not on a legal ground but on spiritual grounds. Uh, well, on hope. Uh, in the hope that he would receive him back, not only as a slave, but also as a brother in Christ. So more of Paul's recommendation was for Philemon to receive Onesimus as a brother in Christ, one who's equal with him in Christ. But um, Paul put some extra pressure on Philemon to do so when we read the letter. So when we read from verse 8 to 9 and also verse 14, we see that um, by indicating that he would not command Philemon what to do when he could actually do so. But by appealing Philemon's reputed good character, faith and love, he says, um, by asking a personal favor from Philemon as a partner in gospel, by offering him to pay any debts owed to Philemon by Onesimus. And he also reminding Philemon of a rela uh, relational debts that he owed to Paul. And he and is asking for a personal sympathy from Philemon that while he was in chains. And he's, uh, we also see that Paul is making a matter uh, of obedience. And he is letting Philemon know that he is coming soon and would be planning on staying with Philemon. In verse 22, we see that I will come back and stay with you. I'll come soon. I'm planning to stay with you. Uh, what a message of hope we see in this. And... Uh, uh, we see that this book was written uh, during 62 to 63, or, or some of the scholars say 64 AD. And the central theme of this book is forgiveness and reconciliation. So it has to do with the receiving an offending brother back into a spirit of love. So the very key word in this, uh, in this letter is receive. 
as we see uh, in the essence of the gospel when we when we read through this book there is a message there is an essence of message in this book what is it i would like to list it in points uh, uh, so that we can understand and relate it to us when we read this book when we see the relationship of onesimus who's been a slave who ran away and the master philemon and paul's recommendation to philemon to forgive uh, onesimus uh, which caused death for him for the for the act that he committed for the sin that he committed so we can relate that as a sinner to god the sinner has ran away from god the law condemned the sinner and gave him no right to appeal and we also see as a sinner could never pay the debt that was owed and the sinner flees to the arms of jesus here we see the picture of the cross that jesus stepped into to pay the debt for us as a sinner turns from his sin and brings forth the fruit of repentance we see the sinner receives forgiveness not on the basis of law but on the basis of grace the sinner comes a new creation in christ who is freed from all bondages now so we can uh, relate this gospel message into this letter though um, paul may not be sharing uh, you know the gospel in the just like what he did in other places but here we see the gospel been shared action so what are the main features of the book of philemon we see that paul spoke often as his natural at of his natural situation like when we go to each was we see that uh, paul sharing it in this way like i was a prisoner of christ paul yes he was aged and he was a prisoner he was chained he was in chains so he said spiritual father in chains my chain, even in my chain gospel will not be stopped and he shares the message of hope even in this season so paul wrote this letter personally perhaps to ensure that others were not brought into private matter so the letter to philemon is a powerful for many reasons it is the only letter where paul does not plainly mention jesus death or resurrection and this is not an oversight even though he did not explain or talk more about the cross with words but he demonstrated it through his action he always been a living example for us to imitate him and the later part we see in the history that it is very likely that onesimus became the bishop of ephesus so in 110 ad father ignatius was writing to the churches of asia minor and he mentions that the name of the bishop of ephesus was onesimus check this so this may even explain why the seemingly insignificant letter made it into the new testament so in any even paul saw something great in the slave he developed a good character within him the life of onesimus became a testimony to many others to what god can do when we give our lives fully to him so fa the fact that uh, philemon and onesimus um you know the the relationship between a, a master and a slave when they forgave each other uh, and they reconciled with each other god could do much miracles and onesimus submitted himself when he submitted him can you see how god raised him from strength to strength glory to glory we can also relate his story to joseph 
we can also see how God raised this slave to become a leader of a church, become a bishop of a church in Ephesus. So God can do anything through anyone when we don't give up on ourselves. All we need to do is just surrender ourselves to the mighty hand of God and allow God to work in our life. When we allow God to work in our life, we see how God can transform our life. He can make it beautiful. This is what his word says. That you are no more the old creation. All things are passed away. Behold, you have become a new creation, new creation in Christ. So the fact that Philemon and Onesimus are now brothers in Christ makes their master-slave relationship totally irrelevant. Now they are brothers in Christ. They are equal in Christ. This story of Onesimus can also be applied in our own life. We may see we are insig insignificant, we are sinful, or it can be in any other way we can relate ourselves to Onesimus. But when we do not give up, when we try to reconcile with every mistake that we did in our past, just for the sake of Christ, you see God can work in our life. God can turn things for us. God can intervene into our life. In that big populous city in um, in Colossae, uh, in Rome, how do you think Onesimus could meet Paul, a leader, which can transform Onesimus' life? He never thought he could be found. His life could be worthwhile or he can come out of this slavery. This is not something, a, a small thing, okay, uh, in our time. But those days, slavery means that you are slave forever. And if a slave commits something wrong, it costs his life. And if you see Onesimus' life, when we read this letter, we see God's hand on his life. God orchestrated everything for him for good and made it beautiful. We see Jeremiah 29, 11 into his life. So if God could change Onesimus' life and make it beautiful and give him a plan to prosper him and to give him success, the same God is with us. He is mindful of each one of us. Today, we may be in different place. We may be impacting. God can call each one of us to impact the world that we are in. We may come across people, different set. It can be rural, it can be urban, but that's the plan for each one of us. There are times we may play a role of Onesimus to a master, but at the same time, we can also be like Paul who can talk on behalf of certain people. There are times God can ask us to play a role of Philemon, to forgive and reconcile with others. So all these three areas, you know, um, can be part of our life as well. So as we study this letter, let's put ourselves in. Let's allow the Lord to work in our life, to change us inside out. L let's allow the word of God to transform our life. As we read, let's say, Lord, can you do this to me? Can you transform my life? Can you make it beautiful? Yes, I understand that you are mindful of me. As God touched Onesimus, God can touch each of us and raise each of us to be a leader in the place where we are. Because the scripture says the harvest is huge, the laborers are few. This is the same even today. The harvest is huge. When we go out to minister, when we look at uh, the crowd, when we look at the people outside, it is the harvest is huge. We need laborers. We need laborers to reach out different set of people. 
we need to be like paul how paul said i am the roman to the roman jew to the jew greek to the greek but his intention was to share the gospel of christ we also see that whoever whoever met paul saw jesus and paul and their life was transformed can we be like apostle paul can our life impact people when we step out can they see the love of jesus in us there are times paul stood his ground he never gave up on people he want to impact them he shared the love of christ he said they need jesus they need to experience the love of god sometimes god moves in us like that sometimes the circumstances the situation may be in favor of us to impact to teach to preach to share the love of christ but then there are certain times it may not be in favor of us but then we need to initiate those in those season or those times those situation we need to press toward it knowing that these people need christ need to experience the love of god when we prayfully do that the holy spirit who is ministering to us can make a way can open the door can move that obstacle and he can make a way to reach out the unreached to reach the unreached in that place in that situation at manglo where we serve we have different set of people they are families they are students so one of the ministry here we do is reach out the colleges so we see students in different colleges are very different the environment is different the teaching style is different but then when we recommend that we want to impact them with the love of christ there are some people who are open who are welcoming but there are certain doors which takes time but then we need we need to knock again and again and again and we know that god will make a way in that area and we can reach a certain crowd when we don't give up god will make a way god ministers to people through us and he desires to do that we can see many onesimus there so when we don't give up god can do greater things in and through us so with that i'll close this letter and open it to the class if there's anyone who would like to share um anything from this letter that impacted your life that uh, is there anything like that that you would like to share and add on It is a very beautiful letter, isn't it? Is there anyone who would like to share anything from this letter? Sally, Brother Subhashish. Brother Lubega, please feel free. You all can just unmute and share. Yes, please. I can see somebody's hand raised. Yes, yes, Brother Lubega, please go ahead. My first time is an appreciation. Uh, when, like, I have some books which I read. Hello. Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Like I have books that I read. Uh, when I look at your notes, they are wonderful because much as in some other books you read, you need forty or thirty pages to read about a given person or personality or give to this letter, for instance. But when you get the nitty gritty of that, so many letters, that so many pages you read, you you read, you find that. the notes you guys are giving us are condensed uh precise concise and straight to the point and are having all what it it is 
uh, to understand on a given person. You cannot understand this if you don't make research. But when you make research and get back, you really see that people there are doing their best. So keep it up. You guys, you are up there with the stars. Thank you. Praise Pastor. God. Praise God. Thank you for that feedback, brother. Thank you. Anyone else would like to add to this letter or you would like to share your experience where you share the love of God or forgiveness of God with others and you saw somebody's life been transformed? Anyone? John, Nikki, Paul, Aradhana, Jeffina, anyone from the class, feel free to just unmute and share. It would be a blessing to each of us in the class. Zeli, oh, would you one like thing to share? I understood from this uh, epistle is we tend to be judgmental sometimes seeing uh, some people's uh, uh, attitude for the first time and we tend to label that person uh, as like that forever. But I think through this uh, uh, the life of Anasimus and the life that he has changed in between, Paul is reminding us that uh, you know the importance of being open to understand uh, as how Jesus sees others, we also can see others. Thanks. Amen. Amen. Thanks, John. Thanks. Yes, being judgmental. <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. Okay. I understand. Okay. You're having a noisy background. You're not able to unmute. Okay. Paul, would you like to share? Or Jeffina? Yes, please. Yeah, um, I believe forgiveness is a beautiful character that Christ has taught us because uh, when you forgive someone and you give them a second chance and you say, I still love you, and it's like the relationship grows much more stronger. And as Brother John said, sometimes we are very judgmental, like we label them and this is who they are, they will never change. And I also felt that Sometimes we forgive people, but they don't forgive us back. Uh, we may have completely forgiven them, but they don't forgive us and they still hate us or things like that do happen. But Christ forgave us a long, long, long time ago. Amen. And we didn't accept him for a long time. But, but just at the right time, people will understand us. That's what I believe on. And forgiveness makes us feel so much better. You know, when, when we know that Christ forgive us, it we couldn't understand that. Like, how can he forgive me? And we sometimes, when I first got saved, I thought no one can forgive for the things that I have done. But we are still forgiven. And that changed my life. That changed my life into so much beautiful. And I think uh, if forgiveness can change my life, Forgive when I forgive people, that will change their life too. So I always forgive people. I never, ever hold anything back against them. And this is a beautiful letter from Paul. And thank you for teaching me this because I have never looked in looked into this letter on this perspective. And mostly I avoided this letter because it's just one chapter. We don't read it so deeply most of the times. And thank you so much for teaching. I really learned a lot. Praise God. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Jafina, for sharing on forgiveness. Yes, it is very important, and that is one of the essence of this letter. Thank you. Anyone else would like to add? Sid, Aradhana, Brother Subhashish, Leah Lama, anyone would like to share? The learning is much when we share our own experience, isn't it? Okay. I understand that, okay, we have understood this letter and we got the essence message of this letter. So with that, we can end the session with a word of prayer. Can I request Jeffina? To end the session with a word of prayer, please.
Jeffina. Yes, Pastor. Yeah. Can you uh, end the session with a word of prayer? Yes, 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 I can. Yeah. Thanks. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the amazing class that we had. God, thank you for teaching us to forgive people. And thank you so much for forgiving us. We don't deserve it, but you still searched us, found us, and forgave us and gave a new life. We we can never say enough thank you to you, but we still want to thank you, Lord. And help us to develop this character within us, to forgive people, to love people, just like how you did when you were down here on this earth, just like how you love people. Help us to love them and forgive them and help us to live just like you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so today's session. Great week. See you all next Monday. God bless. Thank you.